I beg your pardon, good sir. Just got to get round here, and there we go. Two people dead, and yes, another building has just become available for purchase. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today you join us back in the world of Fable Anniversary, where I'm going to be exploiting some of my favorite mechanics and becoming an evil demon greater than Mr. Monopoly himself. We're going to be subjugating the people of the Fable universe and Albion into eternal rental servitude, using a handy dandy list of complicated exploits to make it all very possible. Now of course Fable is one of the greatest RPG games ever released made by Lionhead Studios and it has some very questionable gameplay features, like say the ability to buy just about everything, including morality and human beings. So, I don't know, Peter Molyneux was high on tea bags when he made this game? One thing's for certain, this game is very unique. So we're going to dive back into the world of Fable and put some of our infinite money from last episode to use by destroying many of the game's other mechanics for your entertainment. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice warm cup of tea, as we've got a very strange Fable video coming. Now of course make sure to salute the picture of the Queen that I'm sure you have hanging above your computer, and if you're feeling particularly majestic you can even like the video. Now let's dive into the world of Fable. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. Ah oh, yes, Fable Anniversary. It's like the first Fable, but just a little bit more graphically pleasing. Now we're going to be hopping back into the same character as the last time we played, the terrifying Liberator who managed to destroy the in-game economy via trading in the humble apple. You see, in the Fable universe, apple is a way to infinite wealth and money, just like our real timeline. Because in Fable, you can buy an oversupplied good at a cheaper price and then sell it at an inflated price to the very same person you bought it from. By repeating this process, you will end up with unlimited money. But today, we're going to take that money and do some absolutely crazy things with it. So let's jump into the game. Now, you might be wondering, why on earth am I in the world of Fable trying trying to become a landlord. Well, it's because as someone who's experienced the enlightening creation that is the UK rental market, I've come to realize that my life is missing, the ultimate landlord simulator. But thankfully, that's where Peter Molyneux steps into the picture, because with the release of this game in 2004, even you can now live the true landlord's dream. Now, you might be wondering, why isn't everyone a landlord if this game makes it so easy? Now, you see, there are three limiting factors holding people back from owning every single house in the world. These three things needed to become a true landlord are 1. The money to buy a house, 2. The method to remove the house's current owners, and 3. You must not have a soul. <laughs> Luckily I have all of these things and more, and that allows me to guide even you in your journey to become the most powerful landowner in the universe. Now of course I do have to show off how to actually completely dominate the market, and so for that I'm going to show off how to generate infinite money. Now you see there are two ways to generate infinite money, there is the way of selling a massive amount of goods to massive increase its local supply, allowing you to then buy it back at a lower price than you sold it to them for, which can lead to infinite wealth. However, my favourite thing to do is just open up this sell window here, which as you can see it says we can sell 194 apples, but then press this button and move the selection process over to this health potion. Now apples sell for about 4 gold, health potions however sell for about 60, but you'll notice we only have 12 health potions. But what we're going to do is sell 194 apples while selecting the health potions, and what you're going to notice is in the bottom left hand side of our screen, we're going to be making a little bit more money than the 400 gold we really should be making. Yep, there we go, we've sold all of our health potions and gained several thousand gold. And you'll notice all of our apples are still there. And if we go to the shop, you'll notice this very curious incident whereby the shop now has 108 health potions. That's right, if you're ever running low on health potions, then you can just duplicate them yourself using this buy and sell exploit. It's absolutely handy. And so there you go, we now have all of the infinite money necessary to buy these houses. Now we need to do step two, uh, evict the current owners, forcefully if necessary. So let's go find some lovely houses. Now you see I'm in the market for houses and there's a whole bunch of lovely houses around here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make myself right at home in here, uh, knock down this doorway and then step upstairs. Who's this up here? Oh. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come inside of here and murder these current owners. Um, there's only two of them. Now luckily they've just both died and you'll notice Peter Molyneux added this thankful pop-up to tell us that a new property has just entered the market. <laughs> I wonder whose building it could be. Could it potentially be this building where the owners just tragically died? Oh my goodness, what a tragedy. I hear they um they both fell on the stairs. Oh, what a shame. The humanity. Would someone think of the property? Well, it's a good thing someone does and that someone is me. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy this lovely house. There we go. Buy this for 11,000 gold. Don't 
mind if I do rent out this building? A sure thing. There we go. Ah, uh, it's as easy as that, ladies and gentlemen. We're now renting out this building, and that'll be bringing in a nice little bit of income each week. Now all I need to do is open up this property across the street for rental opportunities. Sorry, please don't mind me. Oh, sorry. Yep, I beg your pardon, good sir. Just got to get around here, and there we go. Two people dead, and yes, another building has just become available for purchase. Lovely. Now, as long as the new owners actually forgive the dead bodies on the floor, I'm sure everything will be perfectly fine. Now, we're not technically killing the local population because these are just NPCs, and if there's one thing I know about NPCs in Fable, it's that more will come with time. So, let's make our way into this house and uh, open up another property. Sorry, Mill the shopkeeper. There we go. Lovely stuff. A brand new building. Now, we have our little corner plot in the village. Oh, and a shop just became available for buying. <laughs> I see, because we've murdered a couple of shopkeepers, we're now almost able to buy everything in this little village. Right, let's rent out this building. Lovely. And all we have to do is go down the hill and buy the local shop. Fantastic. Now, what actually brought us back to Fable today? Well, only a few weeks ago, ladies and gentlemen, Fable 4 was announced. I know, it's absolutely brilliant news. Who knows when it's actually coming out, but all that matters is that when it does, hopefully it will capture some of the same quirky charm that the Fable series has. Like, say, the, uh, the fratricide, uh, the mass sacrifices to evil gods, and of course my personal favourite, hidden doorways that only let the morbidly obese pass. What an incredible enlightening feature. Now we're going to buy the local shop for 31000 and of course, you guessed it, rent out this building. Oh, look at our lovely brand new shop. And then we're going to go down this little corner here and buy ourselves up yet another little house. Now we've done all of this without the local authorities really getting upset with us. I mean, we are technically slightly evil, but when you're this evil, ladies and gentlemen, it turns out you can just buy your way back into the good graces. Right, let's buy this building for 6,000 gold and rent it out. Lovely stuff. Oh, this is just a brilliant start to my empire. Look at that mini map in the top right. This morning we had nothing, but now six houses to start our property empire. It truly is majestic. Anyway, all that I need to do now is show off another infinite money exploit and then buy up the rest of the houses in this little village before we move on to a slightly larger location. Now here in Oakville, there is of course one house which is slightly better than all others. This is your old family home. It's better for one very important reason. You can hang trophies up on the wall. Now why is a trophy important? Well it seems trophies are a little bit broken in this game. Now you see this house is actually very cheap. You can buy it for 16,000 gold and then you can immediately sell it for 16,000 gold. This is of course not a way to get infinite money. But the way to get infinite money is quite simple. Buy the property, walk inside the property that you just spent 16,000 on, and then on the property's walls place literally any trophy that you've picked up. This is the Wasp Queen's Head, the earliest and easiest trophy to get in the game. We're simply going to use it and hang it on the walls. Now we can take it off the walls whenever we like, but because it is on the walls, this property is now actually 100 gold cheaper, because the property's value is also including the trophies inside. Now the way we can absolutely abuse this mechanic is by breaking the front door of our own house, 1,100 gold, walking back inside of our very own house, yanking the trophy back off of the wall, and then buying the house again for 100 gold less. And it's as simple as that, ladies and gentlemen, you can generate infinite gold. Now, of course, don't use a wasp head's trophy, it's only 100 gold each time, but you can use whatever trophy you like. We're effectively buying ourselves a house, redecorating it with some fantastical furniture items, and then people who really like the look of those furniture items will pay extra for the property. But then by the time they get to actually moving into the property, you've already stripped all of the furniture off of the walls, because that makes perfect sense. And by stripping the furniture off of the walls, you can then buy that house from underneath the original owners for a very, very cheap price. Anyway, let's go occupy some more homes. Trust me, my character's not evil, he's just, you know, financially creative and dubious. Also, I would like to say that my character, whilst he does look exceedingly evil, this is what happens to you after two cups of coffee. This is what coffee does to you, ladies and gentlemen. It's a very dangerous substance. That's why I only drink the finest Yorkshire tea gold. That's right, it's ad break sponsor time. This week's episode was not brought to you by Yorkshire tea gold, because once again, they do not sponsor these videos. But oh, I do wish they could. Now, I did speak to the people at Yorkshire tea head office, and they said for the first 8,000 people who like this video, they will be sending out a single unpackaged tea bag to their address. That's right, one single tea bag for you. Disclaimer, the tea bag may or may not have already been used by Spiff, but I'm sure that's something that you're just going to have to find out. You have been warned. Side effects of Yorkshire tea also include the ability to fly, become an immortal, no clip free reality, and 
generate infinite wealth. Be careful. I've got some great news. The sun is going down and you can probably guess that what that means. That's right, people are going to sleep. Look at this. Got a lovely husband and wife combo here going into this lovely one bed detached property, uh, which is great because now it's night time and we can just uh, equip our sword and wander in here. Hopefully no one's going to notice. Anyway, sorry, one sec as I just uh, murder both of you and uh, nothing happened. Oh, buildings available for buying. Oh, two buildings became available for buying. I guess you owned a local little shed somewhere. Anyway, let me go and wander into this next house here. Oh, hello. Are you returning home? Go on, go home. But I won't judge, but I will follow you. Right into the house I go. Don't mind me. Hello. Just want to double check. Is it just you in here? Okay, right. Well, I suppose that does make things a little bit easier. Uh, it's Kaboosh. Fantastic. Oh, wait. I realize um, this is probably his wife. Oh, my goodness, it is. Something tells me she might not be happy with the uh, murder scene she's going to walk in on. It's a good thing uh, she won't have the chance to remember it for too long. Or are you okay with it? Is everything fine in here? Everything's fine, is it? Okay. Oh, is the body just gone? The body of your husband has just phased out of reality, madame. Um, allow me to assist with this unearthly situation. Anyway, fantastic. This property is now available for purchase. I mean, after all, if you want to really make headway in a very saturated property market, the best way to do so is just murder the current occupiers. Oh, hello there, Mr. Armorer. I'm guessing you own the local armoring shop. Fantastic. I'd like to own that. Ah, there we go. The shops just became available for purchase. All right, now I'm guessing this lady probably owns a house somewhere in this village so I'm afraid she has to go as well. Rest in peace. And then let's also pop inside of this house here. Oh, there's the owner just coming back from a long hard day's work of not dying. Such a tragedy. What's going to happen here? Sorry. And there we go. The building just became available for buying. Oh, he owned a barn. I see. All right, now we're going to buy this building here and rent it out. And then also this building here. And we'll rent this one out as well. Now we'll go and buy the shop in the center as well. And I think the only thing we need to do after that is maybe see if we can take control of the tavern. I don't know if this game will actually even let me buy a tavern. There we go. I can rent out this armor shop here. All right, now let's see if we can try and seize this tavern for ourselves. Something tells me relatively unlikely. Right. right we're going to have to do a little bit of mass murdering here. All right, sorry. Uh, game master, I need you to die as well. All right, you need to die. And then so do you. And there we go. And then we also should probably murder this uh, guard here. Fantastic. A building just became available for purchase. It is this uh, very same pub. So let's quickly buy it up. And another building just became available for purchase. What's this? My crimes, six times murder, one time vandalism, 12,000 gold. I'll pay that. I paid the fine, but I got thrown out. Jeez. Am I allowed back in? Will they let me back in? Something tells me they might not let me back into Oakville. I need to go back in. I have to collect taxes just because I massacred a little bit of the local population. <gasps> but the pub's still available for sale. <laughs> Brilliant news. The guards basically gave me a slap on the wrist and were like, okay, fork over £12,000 and promise not to murder any more of the residents. How is this even okay? Right? Now, just about every building in the entire village will be mine. Pub shall be mine for 36000 We shall rent it out as lodging. And then finally, this property here shall also be ours for 6,000. Lovely stuff. I guess there is also this house here, which we haven't dealt with. Apparently there's someone sleeping inside. Ah, thank you. I require this house, madame. Brilliant. And would you just look at that? The entirety of Oakville is now ours. Every single property owned by the glorious Spiffco regime. We can charge whatever rental prices we like because we own everything. My goodness, it's perfect. Now all we need to do is deal with our slight evil problem. You see, people don't respect us and are terrified of our presence because of just how evil we are. So we need to do the only rational thing to try and convince people we're not evil. And that is, of course, donate money to a random church on an island. But this church has some very unique features. Because not only can you donate gold to improve your karma, you can also donate gold to increase your character's lifespan by four years. That's right, for 50,000 gold, you can increase your character's lifespan. It turns out the answer to immortality deep down was just having infinite money. And it's a good thing that I know how to make infinite money. And now that we have a good income source thanks to all of these rental properties, we're going to be absolutely swimming in cash. And we can use the cash from our forceful home invasions to not only pay off our rental properties, but more importantly, the cash is going to let us pay off the karma damages of murdering the occupants of the housing we stole. So let's hop ourselves into a bed and have a nice little sleep. And we wake up in a few days time, there'll be lots of rental money 
money for us to collect. Oh, and here come in our brand new residents. Look at them. Here they are. They're um a little bit scared of us, but these are about to be our brand new home occupiers. You see, we've uh, we've just increased the game speed a bit, waited a couple of days, and now all of the new residents have moved in. And these residents are going to enjoy paying my lovely exorbitant tax fees. Oh, yes. Enjoy. Oh, it's perfect. Ah, oh, and lovely. Here's our armorer, who is now our technically hired staff, considering we're now renting out this shop. Oh, and of course, I'm going to get a special offer because this is my shop, isn't it? Yes, all of the special offers are mine. Oh my goodness, look at this. Piercing augmentation. This looks fantastical. Let's buy this. Now, why on earth are we buying this? Well, it's because I intend to sell it back. The piercing augmentation is a valuable thing. We could sell it back immediately from the person we just bought it for, for a profit of 31. Uh, because apparently that's just how it works. Can we do it and then just buy it again? So we're going to sell this and make 31 profit. And we're going to go over here and buy it. Okay, so we're at 682 gold. And then we sell it with, and we're at 713. Yep, of course, that's how this game functions, right? That's fine. God, there is just no balance in the way you can make money in this game. Yes, the local economy is now looking fantastic now that we've moved in. We've removed a stagnant population and replaced it with a um, kind of terrified population. But a terrified population is still a population that's able to pay rent. And so everything is fine. Right, now I get to do the joyous thing that I've been waiting for. Collect all of my lovely money. Now if I check my inventory, I have 932,500 gold coins, which is quite a nice large amount of money. But let's collect all of my rental opportunities. There we go. And pick up all of this over here as well. And there we go. We're gaining about 2,000 for each house, which is nice and good. We're also starting to improve the get rich or die trying achievement as well, which is lovely. We will also be able to pick up the our rent from the pub and from these two local shops. We can then pick up from the sheds as well, which gives about 900 gold. Yep, yeah, it would seem just about every property gives an average of about 900 gold, which is lovely. And there we go. We've got the get rich or die trying achievement. Lovely. That's a brilliant addition to my financial portfolio. And so we've collected the rent of everything in Bowerstone, and that's ended up giving us about 10,000. Now that 10,000 gold we collected can actually be put to good use, and 10,000 gold actually translates to around about 600 good boy points. I know, that's right. Effectively meaning being a landlord and donating to the church makes your character naturally become one of the most divine and otherworldly beings that would sit right up on high with an archangel. It's just absolutely dumb. <laughs> you love to see it. This game design is really something. Now all I need to do is progress through the game enough to actually gain access to this Temple of Avo. And then I can start making my generous donations of lawfully collected money. Yes, no evil necessary in this money. Ah, hello there ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the most heavenly place in this game. Even though there is a massive thunderstorm currently happening and it looks pretty evil, this is in fact the Church of Capitalism itself or the Church of Avocado, whatever you want to call it. It is a place which offers, uh, how do you call it? Ah yes, a place where returning devotees can receive the gifts of the heaven and then you can donate gold to gain rewards. Alright, so now what we can do is go to this lovely fountain here and donate to this temple. Now, thankfully, I have a large amount of gold to donate. Millions, in fact. And so consequently, that noise you hear in the background, that's actually the financial success and spiritual generosity of my lovely character. So we're going to be donating as much gold as we humanly can. And whilst you might remember that before this, my character was effectively a demon who was probably close to being Satan themselves. After this lovely transaction, my character should be more divinely and heavenly and just overall more lovely. Right, let's donate to the church. Ah, oh, the gods are pleased by my donation. Lovely, very pleased indeed. And I've gained 920 good boy points. Fantastic. Now you'll notice after my lovely charitable donation, my character looks significantly less evil. Look at these lovely little horns. They're no longer as aggressive and as menacing as they were previously. And all it took was a generous donation of around about 400,000 gold. Now that's just fantastic. That's actually brought back all of the morality and more from that awful predicament where I accidentally murdered the entirety of the villagers of Oakville in order to buy up their properties and sublet them to new tenants. You see, morality is exceedingly ambiguous and consequently you can pay your way to divinity if that is what you really see. Right, and it's now a brand new day and I'm ready to go and increase
increase my divinity some more. But of course, in order to increase one's personal divinity, it's exceedingly smart to go and find yourself the lovely merchant of Bowerstone. So in order to increase my lovely morality, I'm going to go and find this lovely trader on the corner here. It's good old Derek. Derek is a source of infinite money because Derek doesn't really know how valuations work. Consequently, Derek has ended up with 617 wedding rings in his inventory. Anyway, I'm going to be nice to Derek and I'm going to buy 145 apples. That's going to set me back a few thousand, but that's okay. Don't worry, it's all part of the plan. Now, what we're going to do for Derek here is we're going to sell him something, something very valuable. We're going to be selling Derek a wedding ring. Now, the best way to sell Derek a wedding ring is, of course, to select the 500 green apples that you have set in your inventory, go over to the lovely wedding ring section, and then, of course, have the wedding ring pre-selected with, of course, a sell 519 button. So we're going to sell 519 wedding rings that don't exist to the trader. And we'll bam, there we go, that's 100,000 gold. Then, once again, we buy back a couple of wedding rings. In fact, we can probably buy back all of the wedding rings. In fact, yes, we've done that. And that technically allows us to sell all of the wedding rings back for a profit of 610 each because we bought the entire supply of a 1,000 wedding rings. There's now such a shortage that the value of wedding rings is increased. So we sell them all back and we're now up to 1.5 million. Then we're going to buy ourselves these 1,000 wedding rings again. Now we're down to 1.2 million. Then we're going to sell them back. Now we're at 2 million. Lovely. All right, and after repeating this process a few more times, we've managed to hopefully gain a nice amount of income. Let's see. We're up to, yes, 5.8 million. Lovely stuff. All right, and I actually think we'll probably stop here at 7 million. 7 million seems uh, like enough money. So what we're going to do is then trample over to the Temple of Avo, do a nice little recall to here, and then pledge another fantastical donation to the church, consequently making ourselves one of the most heavenly and divine individuals on the planet. All right, let the donating commence. As always, be generous with your soul and your purse is a lovely motto to have in life. And after all, who can hate the landlord who gives so generously to the divine? There we go, that's a million, I think. And there's two million. That's three million and four million and five million. Okay, right, this seems fine. We're going to donate 6.9 million gold to the church. This will be perfect. Donate. Oh, the gods are pleased. Very pleased. Lovely. <laughs> that has given me 690 morality points and increased my lovely attractiveness, hopefully. And then going to travel all the way back to Bowerstone self and repeat this process. And there we go. Look at me. I get called your lordliness. I look lovely now. I'm so attractive. I'm actually human. But I like to trade. I'd love to trade. But did I just manage to sell 500 diamonds to someone who can't actually have diamonds? I've done that, haven't I? I've added diamonds into his inventory. So that was an accident. <laughs> oh, goodness. But yes, um, the issue is with this selling exploit is effectively I can select anything with apples and sell any item to any trader. It can be something of immense value. It can be something of basically no value. Like, for example, I can sell this bandit seal. I can sell 519 of them for a profit of 958 each. So bam, there we go. That's a million gold. And this trader technically should not be able to ever sell bandit seals. But there we go. We have one. Right, let's buy all of these wedding rings. And then once again, sell back all of the wedding rings for a nice profit. And then just repeat this process. Just to get ourselves back up to where we were. And if we do this one more time. There we go. We've achieved the maximum money you can actually have in this game. 9,900,099 gold. There is no way you can make any more money than this. The game physically can't calculate it. All right, now let's travel back. Back to the temple to make another lordly donation. Ah, oh, just look at how lovely and holy and divine I am. Now, technically, you're meant to do your donations in chunks of 50,000 at a time, and you shouldn't really be donating a million at a time, because it doesn't really make much of a difference. However, when you have this much money to throw around, does it really matter? All right, there we go. 60,000 to the church. That is 100 divinity points for me. Lovely. If I take a look at my stat, my alignment is now positive 22. Right, let's grind this bad boy up a bit. I wish to become more heavenly. After this process, we will have gone from being the most evil person this game allows you to become to becoming the most heavenly and divine person that this game lets you become. All in one easy swing. All right, there we go. 80,000 to the church. And there we go. Some nice alignment points. Now my alignment is plus 41. Lovely. All right, I've actually almost achieved a alignment of positive 100 and all it's cost me is about 300,000 gold. If it was honestly this easy to become more pious than the Pope himself, then I think I'd have chucked out 300,000 gold ages ago. Just run down to a bank, take out a loan, and become the Pope. I suppose the alternate way of doing it is buying yourself a reverency online. Wait, hang on a second. I could do with another one of those. Wait, no. No, there's no way. I shouldn't. I've bought too many titles myself online. Or maybe I should. Okay, fine. A silly target. But for 10,000 likes on this video, I will try and buy myself the title of Pope online. I don't know if it's possible. I don't know if there's a website, but I will attempt it. I will get a certificate crowning myself the Pope. This is a very good use of Patreon money, trust me. All right, there we go. A 
only can go to the church. Let that align me a little bit better. Very pleased by my donation. Lovely. That's exactly what I'd like to see. Right now, how positively aligned am I? An alignment of 87. We're getting close, ladies and gentlemen. Our hair has gone excessively blonde. Oh, and there's even a little bit of a halo forming around me. Oh, yes. The divinity is strong with me. All right, this is it. This is the big push. We've managed to cross the threshold where we are only six alignment points away from total 100% divinity in the game of Fable. And so we will gain total divinity with a last donation of just under five. 5 million gold. The gods are very pleased. Good. Good. Let me take a look at my own alignment chart. How strong is it? 95 alignment. That only moved my alignment up by one. I'm only 18 years old, apparently. My character is 18 years old. <sighs> I guess his life keeps getting reset because of these uh, massive cash donations to the church. It truly is an enlightening thing. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I've actually achieved it. If you take a look at this, we've managed plus 100 alignment. We have become more divine than Avo himself. In fact, we even got an achievement for it and everything. We have become the ultimate hero. Who knew all it would take was donating around about 10 million gold to the church. It's truly a perfectly balanced religious experience. Now let's go through some of our fantastic stats. We've killed 176 bandits on our journey. In terms of romance, we've, um, we've had none. My goodness, it appears they've left in a statistic for a way of measuring the average World of Warcraft player. My goodness. Oh, but this is my favorite statistic. This is the money statistic. The highest amount of money we ever had was 30 million. The total money we've ever acquired was 25 million. And the total amount of money spent 23 million. I have no idea how this actually adds up, but oh well, the game's a little bit balked. Anyway, I'm afraid that's actually all for today, ladies and gentlemen. I've had an absolutely fantastic time playing Fable today. And if you've enjoyed watching, then feel free to leave a like on this video. It does massively help us out. Anyway, what video do you want to see next, ladies and gentlemen? There's a few interesting developments coming up. I think I might have been able to squeeze in some early access for Crusader Kings 3. At the same time, Total War Troy just got released. And then again, there's also exploits for Skyrim which need to be discovered. So do you want to see A, CK3, B, Total War Troy, or C, Classical Skyrim? The choice is yours, ladies and gentlemen, so hop down to the comment section and leave your vote. As always, a massive thank you to each and every one of my majestic patrons who make these fantastic videos all the more possible. Seriously, thank you very much for your continued pledge. It really does help us out. And as always, if you're new here, do consider subscribing because we'd absolutely love to have you on board in the long run. I mean, you might not have even realized that you haven't subscribed yet. So if you've been wondering when might be the perfect time for you to do it, well, now's your time. Hop down to the comment section and say hi if you're new. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely day and goodbye for now.